know, just get grabbing. We are live with yeah. the third best speaker. The bestest. The bestest third speaker. The bestest third speaker. You know how I like to say it? When I when I don't get first, I say I am the the bestest in the in north in northern western america or from from canada or of any woman with my name i'm the top angeli of the world this year i'm the best in my household okay and i'm married to a preacher my husband's a retired minister so he is he seemed very quiet no, he's totally introverted, but he yeah. when he gets on stage, he like becomes this different person. Oh, no way. Really? He's like one of those introverts, you know, like oh. Aaron Beverly, like that. They could become alive on stage. Wow. Yeah. Well, so a lot of Toastmasters are going to be watching this and they, you know, they're not like born with it or they don't they don't look like much when you see them in the hallway, but when they get on stage, they have something. Do you think that yeah. that something is kind of like genetic it's like god put it in your husband and no. it just comes alive or you think you can no. really train this stuff i don't think it's genetic i think it's i think that we all have it in us it's just you make a choice of whether or not you're going to show up and be yourself on stage i mean it, it you know it's it sounds it, to me it sounds a lot easier than it really i mean it sounds it sounds easier than it actually really is but it's just about putting yourself and just being seen and revealing who you are. That's what it comes down to. I don't think it's ne its a gift necessarily. Yeah. I think we all have it. That's how I honestly feel. Yeah. yeah. But that's, that's good to hear because you hear a lot of stories of people that like were really hard to get to like the final stage of the world championship where you were on a month ago, but you in the second place winner, this was like your first shot kind of, and you guys excelled so we're like there must be something called natural talent because <laughs> louisa has been doing that this for 11 years getting better and better and better and then got second place in the world and then got first place this year so yeah you know, sometimes we wonder if it's you just got it or you don't i don't know or it's luck <laughs> it's like you know what i got lucky that day i got lucky i walked away with the th with third place whatever just yeah. happened just on that on that day i gave that speech and uh whatever there were disqualifications there were who knows what happened mm. you know i one thing that i learned quickly on is that don't get too attached when things are great and don't get <laughs> too attached when things are not so great and you know that does come from a lot of experience being a criminal defense attorney mm. i you know how often i lose 99.999 percent of the time no. yes and know. and so yeah so so yeah it's it's it, anyway it honestly it's like why'd you win luck and also here's the thing it doesn't matter how many years you've been at toastmasters it's how many years have you been a human being sharing who you are you know so so to me yes i mean i think it certainly it helps to have experience because now when i go next time it's like i kind of know what that feeling is to be on the world stage and all of that. But I think what it comes down to is, are you willing to be a human being today and share who you are, what you care about? That's what I honestly think. And it's like, you know, why am I so special? I got lucky that day, big deal, yeah. you know, move on. Yeah. Move on, so what's the next goal then? <laughs> yeah, my trophy's downstairs. I'm not gonna like, you know, stick with my trophy and hug it all day, I got things to do. Yeah, but, but for how many days did you sleep with it? That's the real question. You know what? I didn't, it's, it's, it's nothing. You know, I was going to say it's, it's a very big, heavy trophy. I didn't sleep with it at all. No, it's did sleep, you know what? In the hotel room, the semifinals trophy. Yeah. I slept with that trophy. Yes, I did. <laughs> oh, I slept with it in my, oh yes, I did. You're like, move over hubby. Tonight well, I have a new hubby idol. wasn't even there yet. Okay. Aww. He was watching it live stream, right? So he's Aww. in San Francisco. We're in the San Francisco Bay area. I call him from LA. I go, Honey, as you can see, I made it to the finals. Will you come see me? He's like, oh, well, why don't I just I go get on that plane or we're getting a divorce. That's how, my, that's how introverted he is. It's like, are you serious? You're not going to get on. I go, you get on the plane right now. So I get my sister on the phone. I said, put him on a plane to LA. It's only like, you know, 50 minutes away. I know. Can you believe it? I don't think so. <laughs> well, <laughs> It, this is, it brings to the question of like, how much support do we need from our loved ones? <laughs> no, you, you, you know, you've got, got to support. You don't need it. it. It wasn't the thing you were thinking about as you were speaking. You were thinking about us, weren't you? When you're in that, 
because when you speak and when you did those interviews afterwards, I was in like the second row when you did the interview with Aaron Beverly and the oh, three of you on that stage. Yes. It was so, I don't, I guess you probably felt it too, but, or maybe you were distracted, but did you feel how much we loved you three? Like, it, yeah, yeah, yes, I did. I felt, loved you guys? <laughs> yeah, I just, I really did. Yeah, that was so special. I really, I think when I look back on the most powerful moments, I mean, that being on stage, you know, with Louisa and with Hannah and, and with Aaron and just being there, first of all, you know, it's all over. So the stress of that, but just being there was just such an honor and with the power, you know, with two other women, it was just so awesome, just beautiful. I loved it. I loved, that was my favorite. Honestly, that was my favorite part, you know? And you're not even, I wasn't even like, I didn't have that feeling. And it was my favorite part of the entire three day conference. And most conferences I go to, that was my favorite moment. Seeing when Aaron would ask you a question, you would become so human and you, do, <laughs> you would close your eyes and you would like think, I imagine you would feel what you wanted to share. You would yes. pause, which yes. is very powerful. And then you would breathe and then speak, which like nobody does. I never breathe. I never close my eyes. I never like integrate any of my feelings. I just talk. Right. So I was like, yes. oh, this is what being present is. I have a lot to learn to get to the level where I can like be present with an audience. It's very in action. But you know what, Jessica? So I don't do, I mean, you know, I'm a work in progress, but one of the interesting things for me, I don't know if you experienced this because I know that you speak on stages a lot. When I'm on stage, for some reason, I get very present with myself. Like mm. I just slow down. And mm. I think it's because I can feel the audience too. And I just slow down and I'm able to just mm. slow down and really think rather than naturally, like I'm so excited to talk to you and I'm going to go, because I know you like to talk too, but I would say that's something that I really have to work, work hard on is to slow down. But, I, but normally it happens to me on stage is when I'm the most present and the most vulnerable and the most revealing. I don't know what that is. Isn't that weird? And I think it's also because I'm not standing there worried, thinking what everybody's thinking about me, because what I really think is that nobody's really thinking about me. They're thinking about what is she going to say that has to do with me? Like everybody is just as self-absorbed as I am. You know what I mean? So I, so, so I think that there's a certain kind of freedom that I have and not all the time because the final speech, that was, that was hard for me. I was in and out. And let me tell you, I'm never wearing that cream colored outfit again. Okay. What? Uh, 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 no, no. Because, I would have because that's not a natural. Now it, it felt good flowy, but I wasn't totally free. Whereas the semi-final speech that I did, that was kind of like more a character that I like, you know, I'm wearing like my black boots and I, I don't know. I just felt okay. more fiery and more, but the mm -hmm. cream colored outfit and I, I felt restrained and it was very difficult for me to walk around that stage and because also I'm not used to speaking to 2000 people. <laughs> so, but, so, but it's not being intimidated because to me, every audience kind of like, it feels like one being it's the discomfort of like this stage. It's big. It's this outfit, my false eyelashes, I'm never <laughs> going to do that again. You know, it's like, I know I felt like taking it off halfway. Imagine if you just rip them off one by one and be like, I am not a, I, I am real. And no, I should have done that. Time. I could have won, Jessica. I should have taken, thrown the eyelashes off. I know. I just be like, I, I, it off. I love you. It's not your underwear, but we'll take them. Oh. I know. I was just like, here you go. Judge in the front row. Here you go. And no, the, because it's just, it's, it's like, a, I don't know, but you know, we always, it's like, you know, I could have, I, whatever. Um, I certainly don't regret it. I shared a message that I wanted to share, but just it's that experience, you know, that we were talking about, like Louisa has been on the world stage before. So you think, so now I know, note to self, if I should ever get on the stage again and be the part of the, you know, the top eight. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. It's, it's on. I'm just going to be, I'm, I'm going to like get some it's warrior. Okay. I'm going to get some sisterhood, spiritual warrior energy going. Okay. I am be. I don't know what's going to happen, but I, there's not going to be a cream colored outfit involved. Because I looked at it later, which I hated watching, and I thought, oh, that's nice me. You know, that's, I don't know. So I describe don't... the outfit that you, okay, you say you would, like, wear, like, sister power energy or whatever, but, like, um, like, like hot pink? Is it, like, ripped jeans? Is it, what, 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 no, what is that? You know what? I'm still thinking about that. I know that corporate, like, you know, wearing black and red, 
yeah. is are, are kind of power colors for me. But I'm also thinking, I don't know, it's got to be something tied in with my ethnicity. Uh, with I, I don't know yet. It's I'll let it come to me. But it's going to be something different. Hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. But I wanted to speak about. Were we going to speak about what were we going to speak about again? Speaking oh, we're going to speak about what you're going to wear next time you're on that stage. That Aleka wore African clothes on the stage as the host of that thing, which I thought was kick ass. And you just mentioned that yeah. you want Samoan clothes. I know. I don't even know what Samoan clothes are. I was over in Vanuatu, which is pretty darn close. But oh, Vanuatu, yes, yes. Yeah. And you know, you're saying Samoan, which is totally fine. I used to say Samoan. That's don't, no, don't don't change how you're saying it. Okay. The reason why I say Samoan is because oh. first of all, I'm trying. I'm not a native speaker, and I'm trying to learn my language. Oh, and no, so no. my tutor, it's Sa is sacred, Moa is chicken, so it's Samoa. So oh. I realized, and it's totally fine. Please don't change. Please don't. I'm not. You don't need to say it, Samoa. But I just. So I'm. I made a conscious effort that I'm. I'm just going to say it the way I'm supposed to say it because I. Mm -hmm. Learning the language is important to me. But anyway, so yeah, I probably will wear something, someone. I'm not sure yet. Oh, okay. I'm not sure. But the women are fierce, and well, just women overall, all of us women, and just culturally. So we'll. So we'll see. But all I know is that I want to have fun next time without the false eyelashes without the you know i think that i'll let i'm gonna let more of my natural personality come out you know i feel like in watching the replaced by sophia like oh nice keynote uh but you know the real you is somewhere in there somewhere so anyway mm -hmm. i'm just being critical with myself but i was i was speaking with the audience in the sense that i know that this is what you know speaking with the audience rather than to the audience. I was trying to take the, the audience on a journey of mine and, and that was really special, but it was not, I was not in the flow no. at all. It was not in the flow. No. Could have fooled us, honey bunny. Oh, well, <laughs> hey, hey, that's hey. the actress for me. That's the actress. But the, but me giving myself feedback, I was in the flow with my semi-final speech because yeah. I was in the flow. I was just yeah. like, having some fun. But in the Sophia speech, I think because, well, first of all, I'd only practiced it once. No. Yeah, with Golden Gate Toastmasters. I just went to see them last Wednesday. Yeah, I practiced it once. I got really great feedback. I practiced it once, July 31st. And because I take care of my mom with dementia, it, it just really, most of my energy went into the semifinal speech. You know, and I thought, okay, whatever. You know, I'm probably not going to make it to the final eight anyway, but just in case, I better, you know, practice this one. But now I know for next time, okay, I need to be practicing it a lot more than once. I mean, I practiced it, of course, on my own, sure, uh, you know, it, yeah. but there's, but you really, like to really honor the audience, you really, my opinion is that you need to practice it more and get mm -hmm. more feedback from people. Mm -hmm. And because the feedback that I got, the there's a line in the speech, it's like, she sounds so, she sounds so, oh, 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 I'm so to, oh she sounds yeah. so fake doesn't she yeah that was great like that was you know i when i got feedback later it's like people were saying like you owned it and i thought yeah because that's like a lot of who i am and yeah. so when i heard that i thought yeah next time i get on the final stage it's gonna be mm -hmm. a lot of she sounds so fake <laughs> <laughs> yeah well i was <laughs> you had attitude and i i went away being like Gotten. whoa because very few people decide to pull out their fiery side on a, on a final you thought i had attitude doing replaced by sophia yeah because almost everyone does it like bland like i was so upset oh, I was well, like, attitude I was so fucking pissed, right like you actually showed your anger and your eyes were huge and you were like we can see it in your eyes that you were like super angry and most people act that they don't relive it and so oh when you God. did that Oh, she's risking it because if you show too much emotion as a woman, <laughs> unfortunately, the judges of the world, uh, men often, they put you down more because you're not controlling your emotions on the I'm scene. I'm not going to control it, okay, future judges. I am not going to control it <laughs> because I would rather walk off that stage feeling so like, wow, I did it. And I don't win the trophy or not. Because, you know, when I walked off the stage after doing the replaced by Sophia, I came back. I looked at my best friend, my husband. I said, yeah, it's just not my year. You know, I just, oh, I, I felt it. Okay, so yeah, sometimes we're wrong. Like I know Louisa, I, I think Louisa in watching the interview, she didn't think she was gonna win. So sometimes we're off, but it's just, you know, I wanna walk off the stage knowing that I gave the audience ev the best of me. And I know I gave the audience the best of what I could 
do at the time, but I didn't give the audience like the actual, like just bear it all. I was not self-conscious at all. I didn't. So there's always did a the final. What did you say? You did that in the semifinal. So I did. Yeah, I did. It, it was so fun. Wow. And yeah, it was so fun. Yeah. And I remember, I don't, Roger Caesar. Yeah. Okay. So he was third place in 2021. Yeah. And he was like somewhere in the, I just remember his eyes, even though you could hardly, you couldn't see anybody in the audience, but I remember seeing him like to yeah. my right. And I oh, saw yeah. like his, his eyes and yeah. that gave me even more confidence. Like, yeah, Roger, you know, so, so it was pretty, it was pretty cool. It was a cool yeah. experience. And I really want to have that experience on the final stage. Win or not, I don't care. Trophy okay. or no trophy, I want to have that experience of being so aligned mm -hmm. with the audience and so aligned with myself. Like to me, that is it. That is it. So, but as my acting teacher said, says, don't chase after that. You know, you got it just like sometimes you're going to be on and sometimes you're not. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you just do the best that you can. So, mm -hmm. but I would like to experience that. Yes. <laughs> Right. Wait, this okay. is only 20 minutes. I didn't even I feel like, I feel like just started with you. You're so easy to talk to. Well, because I'm fascinated because I'm going to we're going to do a couple more minutes. We're going to do a little bit longer than 20. Are you OK with that? Yeah, of course. Yes. Great. Uh, it's it's raining. It's Friday night or Saturday night in Barcelona. So hmm. maybe she'll talk to me a couple more minutes. <laughs> of course. So I'm going to Bali. It's the Global Speakers Federation, like 300 of the, not the world's best because Tony Robbins ain't showing up or Oprah or, or uh, you, ha. but <laughs> like there's some people there that speak. And I had this choice of like, do I go on stage and like be me? And I studied clown. So I can really, oh um, yes, I can be pretty dorky and pretty darn funny. Right. But in the clown humorish way, you know, and you either love it or hate it. And, that, and that's what I love. I love I even like when they don't like it, it, I make them uncomfortable and then I make them laugh. So even that yes. would be good for me. Or yes. do I adjust myself to no. 55 year old white people, no. middle class people and appeal? No. no, no, don't adjust yourself at all. Be you. No, yeah. no. Well, wait, what's the purpose of the, the conference or what is the purpose? No. Sometimes okay. Like the, the deeper purpose is like, I'm putting my foot into that industry where they all have 15, 20 years in. And I guess I would like them to see me as a colleague and someone recommendable and and like me, I suppose, or not like me and go, that girl's crazy. And then people go, oh, we want crazy. And then they hire me instead of them. <laughs> I want, I think that's, I think, yes, yes, yes. And I've seen your stuff. I think yeah. you're, and he, wouldn't you rather attract the people that get you and that you had that one, it was on YouTube or something, where you're going through the streets and you're like combing your your hair, your ratty hair and stuff, and then you like pick something up off the floor and you're like walking around. It's like you're damn hilarious, you know. And wouldn't you like? I would rather like find my tribe or have people that are drawn to me. And if people don't like it, you know, then sorry, change the channel. Bye bye. But yeah, yeah but I do understand what you're saying because when you're also trying to get into that community, sometimes because I have that that issue too is sometimes you do have to tone it down just yeah. to get in and then you gotta you know so, so there's 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 it can be tricky yeah yeah it's like okay you're gonna see quarter of me but then guess what's gonna happen when i get in oh you're gonna oh it, it's yeah well i was speaking with i was talking to louisa on um thursday she was coaching me for this speech that i'm doing oh, and awesome. yeah she's so lovely she's doing I coaching a mentoring of people for donations to her her dog spading you know i'm gonna be after you louisa hell yeah i'm coming after louisa yes i already yeah. messaged her uh-huh so yeah. what happened well i'm sure she won't mind sharing it but we were talking about like meeting meeting the people where they are so when you know your audience and you know the toastmasters audience well okay if it's two thousand people from around the world but we're all a tribe so we all are into self-development we're into getting feedback yes. we're yes. very real we don't get too yes. offended about religious or political stuff because we're like you know what? You be you, and we'll and we'll help you yes. grow. So, yes. The question is like, how much do you appease the yes. the old male? If we can be straight up about this, right? Because wow. he has his preferences, and he runs the world still. Yes. And so, anything that's not old white male waspish, um, yes. they don't relate to. And so, yes. are do we? Women have been doing this forever, and as a voice, um, sorry, as a voice actress, I'm not sure the voice 
It doesn't matter what you can say voice actress. Yeah, that's okay, fine. Right. Yes. Yeah. I don't know if the voice acts, but okay, <laughs> if it has its own life. But so when we do this, the client is the winner. Like the client is the boss is the winner. We have to like do what they want. So it's like if the audience is all white males, which it was quite primarily a lot of white 56 year old people in that Toastmasters crowd. Like it was yeah. very American, right? Like I could yeah. count the Africans. There's about 20 of them. I can yes. count the Indians where we're 80. Yes. You know, one guy was of color, Isidro. You know, it's a lot of whole yeah. lot of white people in that. And so it's like when you speak, if you want them to know that you care about them, which we could feel that in yours, which is what the topic is that we'll get to in 30 seconds. Yeah, <laughs> no. Like you do have to talk in a way that they will listen. And so that is an interesting thing. If they don't hear you because they're so shocked or they don't hear you because I'm, I'm going to say something weird, but like if you're too black and they don't like resonate with that and they don't like that, they won't hear your message anyway. It's like, how do you, how do you be you and reach them? It's, it's, it's a big question. I'm not asking really for your. your yeah, no, it's tricky. Right. It's really tricky. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I agree. It's tricky. Mm -hmm. As, as women particularly, and I was so excited. There's like one white dude on the stage at the at the eight finals. I was like, that picture was so friggin' beautiful to me because before the big speeches, they did all the winners in the last 70 years. Like white dude, 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 white dude. And then one woman comes on and we go crazy. <laughs> white dude, white dude, white dude, black dude. We go crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I remember that. Right? Yeah, right before the finals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was amazing. I think that helped the women because any of the women judges would be like, oh, this has got to change. <laughs> it's a subconscious thing. I bet some woman put those pictures up there. just. To and I think Louisa is probably like number nine or I don't know how many. Only? I think Verity was number seven. Oh, gosh. And then one. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's just a, only a handful. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nine and 60 years. I know. Um, puke. Thank God you three won. And thank God three won last year. And thank God three are going to win next year. Yeah, okay. well, longer than 60 years. I think the contest started eight, more than 80 years ago. I know it didn't start 100 years ago, but I think the contest, yeah, yeah, I think it was, yeah. Well, anyway, the three the three of us women, the third time in Toastmasters history. So, you know, awesome, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So something that women do that I, I, I train women almost exclusively because I get them and I know their, their limitations and what like stops them. I have no idea what men suffer through. Um, they can pee standing under a tree. Like, I don't think they have any problems, but we, we have to like deal with a lot of stuff and we tend to like share emotions and connect with people easier yeah. because we were socialized. That's just like a woman thing in the countries I've lived in.